Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel and watching my videos. I greatly appreciate it. The very first item that I have today is titled Michael Patrick Lehe, a judge doesn't have the right to force me to do something unconstitutional. <laughs> As soon as I read this title, I thought, yeah, he doesn't have the right, but he can do it anyway. Uh, this is a story about how the courts are trying to force a reporter to reveal his sources. And he says, a judge in Tennessee may violate the Supreme Court's famous Pentagon Papers ruling and order a reporter in Nashville named Michael Patrick Lee, Lee, L-E-A-H-Y, Lee, Lee, I think it's Lee, to reveal the source of documents leaked to him. The leaked documents in question came from a trans-identified woman named Audrey Hale who killed six people at a Christian school last year. Now, yes, this has created a lot of controversy and you know how authorities are. They always want to hide everything from the public. They don't want the public to know anything because they're scared to death that if we know stuff, we might actually do something about it. And so they're mad that this got revealed and they're, they're going to take it out or will try to take it out on this reporter. But of course, he's going to fight it through the courts and he may end up having to suffer for a little while, but eventually he'll win the case because they always do. So that's that. The next thing that I have is the conspiracy to game the medical literature. Uh, I showed you the first installment of this, and this is the second, and so I wanted to bring it to your attention. It's written by Matt Bivens, who's an MD, and he's now a reporter, and he's writing about uh, having to do with opioids and how the medical profession deals with them. So he begins with, do more reading. I've been told as a medical student when I worried aloud about overly liberal use of morphines. See part one, and he has a link to it if you haven't read it. Had I obediently done so, a thorough review of the medical literature could have turned up many studies demonstrating that a casually written opioid prescription can wreck a person's life. But to find them, I would have had to sift through the many hundreds of peer-reviewed publications arguing the opposite, that addiction with opioid prescription never really happens. He goes on to explain how uh, a, a letter to the editor, a letter to the editor is being used as the proof that opioids do not cause addiction. And you can't believe it. You'll have to read it. Seriously. Seriously. It's mind-blowing to read this thing. Uh, a, a, a doctor and an RN wrote a letter to the editor saying that in their experience, they looked at all their files and they didn't see any evidence of addiction using opioids. Well, okay, but it wasn't even a study, okay? It wasn't even a research paper. It was just an op-ed, a letter to the editor, actually. And... That letter is being cited in numerous research studies that have been published by the pharmaceutical industry to try and prove that opioids do not cause addiction. Yeah, right. Next article. One European country's battle against global pressure. Georgia is standing firm against media scrutiny and Western influence. Um... This one I found really interesting. Uh, you know, Georgia is or was part of the Soviet Union, and now they're an independent country. The country of Georgia legislated a foreign agent law that would require any civil society organization or non-governmental organization receiving at least 20% of its funding from abroad to register as a foreign agent. Now, I've talked to you before about NGOs and how they get most of their funding from governments and and they just they're, they're they have an outsized influence on 
laws that get passed and, and things that get done within inside of countries. It would further require labeling all materials published by said entities as being funded by foreigners. Those opposed to the law portrayed as a threat to democracy, which triggered massive protests in Georgia's capital. How is that a threat to democracy? I don't understand that at all. The real story here is not the law. Rather, it's the Western press coverage surrounding it. Rarely has there been such one-sided coverage of an issue. And when you read down in the article, the EU is doing the same thing, and they're chastising Georgia for doing it. Wait, what? No. This makes no sense. I don't understand. What is wrong with Georgia saying, hey, if you're an NGO and you get your funding from outside of Georgia, then you should have to report that. I don't see what's wrong with that. Can someone explain to me what's wrong with that? I don't, I don't get it. Why wouldn't they want to know that? Because NGOs lobby the legislature directly. NGOs lobby the legislature of that country. So they should have to tell where their money's coming from, don't you think? I mean, that makes sense to me. We ought to know who's funding these people and, and so what the other influences are that they might have on trying to get our legislation passed or overturned in our country. I mean, uh, it, it makes sense to me. I don't understand why the EU and America and other places are upset at Georgia. And they're actually talking about doing sanctions against Georgia for doing this. That's insane to me. It really is. The last item that I have for today is Vaclav Klaus. They prolong the Ukraine war to justify the existence of the European Union. This is an interesting article. If you don't know who Vaclav Klaus is, he was the president of the Czech Republic from 2003 to 2013. He's an economist and an outspoken critic of anti-human environmentalism, the European Union, and wokeism. So obviously he's hated by all the people that love wokeism, and he gives his opinions on a lot of things, and it's an interesting article that you might want to read. So that's the news for today. I hope you enjoy reading these. And again, I want to thank you for coming to my channel. And I want to pray for you. I pray that God will bless you beyond your belief and beyond your understanding, beyond your imagination in ways that you cannot think of. I pray that he will bless you way beyond what you ever would have thought. And I pray he does the same for every person that you love. This is the Vietnam Mirror Vet out.